everyone. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Sarah and I'm doing a joint PhD at the Laboratoire d'Ecologie Alpine in Grenoble in France and at Swansea University in Wales. Um, I would like to talk about the role of traits in biogeographic long distance dispersal of reptiles today. But first, I'd like to thank my supervisors who are Laure Gallian and Sébastien Lavergne in France and Will Allen and Luca Berger in Wales. And also would like to thank my collaborators, Gabe Hasler and Mikhail Nikolai. But now on to the role of traits in dispersal. Uh, in the last years and decades, uh, dispersal has emerged as a very important process uh, that shapes global biogeography. And uh, the distribution of some clades, where uh, it was thought that vicarians was the driving process, it seems like these species distributions can actually better be explained by long distance dispersal. And so it is hypothesized that species raft on uh, vegetation across the ocean and that they manage to establish new populations in faraway locations this way. Um, we assume today also that dispersal is not neutral and that certain traits uh, actually increase uh, the dispersal probability of species. So for example, uh, we think that species who can fly have a higher dispersal probability, probability than species who can't. And uh, also that, for example, plants who have uh, fleshy uh, cones have a higher dispersal probability than those who don't because they can be dispersed by birds. But it was quite difficult until recently to, to investigate the role of traits in more detail because of computational challenges. But uh, now this has become possible. So um, the big question is, how are traits actually linked to long distance dispersal success, and especially in an evolutionary context? It is possible to uh, divide the dispersal process into three different stages, emigration, uh, passage, so the survival of the journey, uh, and establishment of a population in a, in a new location. And uh, it is possible to, to hypothesize that different traits are, are linked to these different stages. So species living on the coast, for example, might have a higher chance to be dispersed than those who don't. Um, uh, body size might be related to the movement stage because it determines uh, fat and water storage possibilities. And um, life history may be linked to the establishment of a new population because it determines the growth of a founder population. To test these three traits, uh, we chose a case study uh, the uh, case study of chameleons. Um, in this family there are approximately 200 species and they have a really uh, diverse life history. Uh, you can just see from the body size uh, that some of them are just as small as your fingernail and others can get quite large in comparison. Um, but what is more important in this context is that overwater dispersal or transoceanic dispersal is very likely to have happened in the biogeographic history of that clade. Today we find chameleons mainly in Africa and on Madagascar, but some species have dispersed to India, for example, and they have colonized uh, islands in the Indian Ocean. And the question, of course, is why did some species manage to do that and why did others not manage to do that? So what we did to test the, the role of traits in this certain case uh, was to use models of uh, biogeography, biogeographic models, uh, that can take traits into account. Uh, starting with uh, the definition of biogeographic regions between which uh, the dispersal and the movements are estimated, um, depending on a trait state, so whether you classify a species as dispersal prone or not, uh, those species or lineages the, their dispersal probability will be multiplied by a parameter m2. Um, and so in the end the big question is what is actually uh, that m2 parameter which is estimated by the model. If that m2 parameter is smaller than one it means that those species uh, hypothesized to be dispersal prone were actually the better dispersers in the past. If m2 is greater than one then this is not the case and you have to re reject the hypothesis. 
So this model can only take a binary trait into account. So the first step of well, the second or third step of this analysis was to actually create three binary trait sets that corresponded to our hypotheses. Um, first of all, we hypothesized that coastal species were better dispersed than non-coastal ones. We, dis we hypothesized also that big species were better dispersed than small ones, and that those with a fast life history strategy had a higher chance of dispersal than slow species. Um, to determine which species were actually fast or slow, this is something quite challenging to do uh, because body size uh, can influence life history traits uh, through allometric constraints. Uh, we conducted a phylogenetic factor analysis and uh, the second factor of this analysis actually corresponded to, to a fast slow life history spectrum. So what we did, we used the scores on this second factor of the species to and a median split to classify species uh, as fast or slow. And here you can see the results. You can see that for habitat and body size, we found strong support for our hypotheses, meaning that um, coastal species and big species had a much higher dispersal probability than non-coastal species and small species. But the life history strategy um, was a bit less clear. You can see the phylogenetic uncertainty here. And so we wanted to dig a bit deeper into, into this matter because we were not quite sure, um, well, the results were, not, were, were ambiguous. And so what we did is we, we conducted additional analysis for the life history strategy. We compared the fastest 25% against the rest and the slowest 25% against the rest. And what we found was quite surprising. We found that not just the fast species had a higher dispersal probability than the slow ones, but also that the slowest ones, so the slowest 25%, had a higher dispersal probability than the rest. And this led us to uh, a new hypothesis, uh, being that the underlying uh, relationship between dispersal probability and the slow fast life history spectrum looks more U-shaped than just a simple line. Um, so what do we take away from uh, this case study of chameleons? Well, first of all, uh, that life history strategy is related to biogeographic dispersal success in an evolutionary context. Uh, in general, we found also that trait dependent models were better than trait independent models, which means that it's very important to take traits into account when looking at the biogeographic history of a clade. And lastly, we also found differences in estimations of ancestral ranges depending on which trait we included in the model. And that means that including traits can actually reveal uncertainties in the biogeographic history of a clade. Uh, just to illustrate this, uh, you can see on the right hand side uh, the phylogeny of the chameleons. And I highlighted uh, so, uh, some nodes in that phylogeny. Uh, those little symbols uh, correspond to dispersal movements. Um, and you see on the left hand side that in the body size model, this node was estimated to have occupied Central Africa, which is area number two. But the habitat model uh, estimated the same node to have occupied Central Africa, Northern Africa and Sokotra. And you can imagine that this has implications for the interpretation uh, of uh, the history of a biogeographic clade if you have these different um, estimations of models. So after the results of the chameleons, uh, after seeing how important life history strategy was, um, of course, that led to bigger questions. We saw that life history uh, had shaped the, the biogeography of chameleons, but so the bigger question is, but how has it shaped global biogeography? Are the patterns that we found in chameleons general patterns? Um, and Actually, that's what I'm working on right now. This is uh, the next step. Um, looking at similar, well, the role of traits in different clades than those of chameleons. Uh, starting with other reptile clades, but then moving on to other, other clades and taxonomic groups like mammals and birds, for example. To start with, uh, we had a look at three different reptile clades, uh, Pygopodoidea, Cordyloidea, and Scaloporus. 
Scalopores occurs in uh, North America and Central America, Cordyloidea in Africa and Madagascar, and Pygopodoidea in Australia. And we tested also body size and life history strategy, um, uh, how, how they affected dispersal probabilities. And we found strong support for, for the hypothesis that big bodied species in general have a higher dispersal probability. The only clade for which uh, we didn't find support in this case was Pygopodoidea, uh, which might be due to the fact that these are legless lizards, and so uh, different rules may, may govern their dispersal probabilities. Uh, but the results for the life history were quite diverse. We found similar results for scalopores as for chameleons, but we found completely opposite results in Cordyloidea and Pygopodoidea. And um, well, you see there is so much research still to do and there are many things still to understand. And those will be the next steps to not just look at these reptile clades, but to scale it up and to look at different areas of the globe and the different um, and the different taxonomic groups to better understand uh, the role of traits in dispersal. And with that, I thank you and uh, I'm very happy to answer any questions you might have.